have a lot of time for is getting ready for the snow because when it starts falling, well, that means the outdoor winter sports gets ready to go. Ansley Watson this morning is at Compound Ski and Snowboard to tell us more. Good morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. If you're an avid skier or snowboarder, I'm sure you cannot wait for the hills to open up. Across the globe, millions of people flock to snow resorts annually. And what's better than going to find new equipment for your hobby? It's so fun. I'm holding hot pink skis and poles are out over there. And I know that I picked these out because Cassie loves hot pink. So I, I did this for her. Um, stay with us. We'll talk more about the equipment that they have here at the compound in a little bit. Reporting live in Marquette, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. All right. Thank you very much, Ansley. I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm not a skier, but yeah. I'm right. pretty sure the color isn't quite as important as making sure they're the right size for I you. I don't know. I, I just, think looks go a long way with any sport. You got to look I buy them because right. they're pink. Okay. Right. I, yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> just you know? to put on your yeah, wall, if yeah, anything. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Back. It's 10 after the hour. So maybe you or somebody you know needs some new ski and snowboard equipment before the season starts. So Ansley this morning is at Compound Ski and Snowboard to tell us more about it. Morning, Ansley. Good morning, Vicki. As you can see, I've already dived into the equipment here. I've got my goggles. I've got the sweet pole. It has fruit on it, so that's fun. And I'm joined with the owner, Brandon Crony. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm curious. If somebody, I mean, they're interested in skiing or snowboarding, where do you begin? There's so much sizing and fitting and comfort. How do you fit a ski to yourself? <laughs> To be honest, as much as it is about the fitting, it all comes down to what's the coolest color. Uh, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it, trust me, I've talked until I'm blue in the face about the wrong ski until a customer tells me that they like the lime green one, and then you switch gears. <laughs> but um, truly, we are trying to fit people for gear that they're going to use for a couple of seasons. We want them to get gear that is going to be f their right ability level and making sure that they're able to control the skis and be able to handle the uh, terrain uh, accordingly. So if you were to ski Marquette Mountain, you're probably going to want a shorter, uh, more turny ski. If you're going to go to Mount Bohemia, you want a wider, bigger ski, more snow up there, stuff that you're going to stay afloat. And then when it comes down to boots and other gear, you're going to want to make sure that it's comfortable. You want to have pants that fit. You want to have a jacket that's loose fitting so you can move your elbows and arms and stuff. And you also want to make sure that um, you have the proper ski poles or goggles or whatever is going to fit your face so you can enjoy the cold weather but not get frostbitten with cheeks or whatever else. You have a whole wall full of boots and boots can kind of be a little tricky when it comes to sizing. Do you want your toes to be touching the edges, not touching the edges? How should they fit? That is um, the biggest misconception is people think that you need to have a, a lot of room in your boots. It's supposed to be a snug fit. You want it to be as tight as possible without being uncomfortable. So your toes do typically really brush the edge just a little bit when you're in them. But if fit properly, you can actually get uh, a very snug fitting boot. It does take a little bit of effort trying on multiple boots, usually using an insole of sorts to try to make the, the fit proper. But um, when sizing families and stuff, I always try to help the parents get an extra season or two out of their equipment for the kids. And a lot of that does have to do with boots growing out of the boot every year. Sometimes we'll do boot swap. You'll be able to mm -hmm. buy a boot from me one year and then uh, return it the next and get another pair. And I'll give you a store credit towards your second pair. Now behind me, these are men's skis, correct? Yes. They are much larger than women's. And I'm guessing that's just because men have more force when they go down the mountain. Why is that? Uh, a lot of it is terrain. Uh, a, a large ski you're going to use at Bohemia or out west. Um, also, guys have larger body mass, so you're going to want to have um, plenty of surface area to float on top of. Um, but guys do use short skis also. Um, depending on the terrain, of course, Marquette Mountain being racing, maybe you use a little shorter, tighter turn ski. Um, you're more nimble on it. Uh, but a lot of the skis are getting fatter and uh, have a lot of technology that's going to be um, uh, for your ability level. Okay, well, thanks, Brandon. In a bit, we'll talk more about snowboarding, how to tune your equipment. Stay with us. Reporting live in Marquette, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. All right, thank you very much, Ansley. And it's not only for the people who are anxious right. to get there. I mean, the holiday season right around yeah. the corner, you might be looking for stuff to pick up. I know right. the people who are ready for the snow Welcome are back. ready. Well, of course, new equipment is always coming out for snow sports. And this morning, we're at the Compound Ski and Snowboard Shop with more on that. Ansley Watson is there to show us what's new. How's it going, Ansley? 
Great, Sam. I've already picked out my skis, my boots, my poles, pretty much everything for myself. So it's been a great time. This morning, we're going to talk about snowboards now and kind of how to tune your equipment. I'm joined with the owner, Brandon Crony. Good morning. Good morning. So with snowboards, I know we were talking with skis. It doesn't really necessarily matter. There's not like a particular fit to it. It's just kind of what color you like. Is that kind of like snowboards too? It is a little bit. Snowboarding is a little bit more determined by your height. Um, I have a board here in particular. This would be a little short on you, but we're always looking for the chin height. So okay. not too far off. Your, your snowboard might be a tiny bit longer. Um, typically, we're trying to find a board that is um, softer for beginners and shorter for beginners, and then longer and stiffer for advanced riders and bigger conditions. What makes it softer? Uh, the, the material in the, the board itself, the wood or the um, metal or laminate or whatever they use to build the board will make it stiffer based on um, the ability level they're trying to accomplish. Okay, and so to tune up skis or snowboards, how do we start with that? Well, we're going to turn on a machine here and make some sparks. Okay. Basically, this is how we start by grinding a ski down and tuning the rust, getting the, the material off of the ski that is um, rusty or um, dirty or whatever. We'll, we'll clean that off with one pass here. Now the ski is basically looking, you know, brand new again on the bottom. And then we'll come over here and throw a wax on this snowboard. And what you're trying to do with wax is making sure that you cover the whole thing nice and smoothly. You take your iron and drip the wax all down the board, kind of just covering it with enough that when you put your iron on it, it's going to spread oh, wow. ed edge to edge like that. Nice, what? smooth, thin coverage is going to uh, be what you want. You don't want a lot of excess, but you want to make sure it has enough. What, is the, what does the wax help do? We're trying to protect from rocks, from crud and dirt that's going to get into the bottom of the board. Um, boards and skis are porous, so they'll collect dirt. And then from there, we'll scrape off the wax, and we'll have that nice, smooth layer that makes it... Um, slippery for the slope. Now how would I know that it's time to get my board re-waxed? Uh, once a year for sure. You always want to tune your equipment once a year, bring it in for basic tune. We do the the edges and the the machine and then also um, be able to do the uh, waxing for you. Sometimes you need it multiple times depending on how often you go. If you're uh, a skier who goes out a couple times a week you're gonna want it done a couple times during the season. Is that just from rocks, I'm guessing, sticks? Is that A little gouging? bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit of gouging. But a lot of the times it's just friction. You know, uh, ice is aggressive against the bottom mm -hmm. of a board. So that is scratching the soft surface and dries it out. And then when we saw the rust on the skis, how does that happen? Uh, oxidation from, from weather in the air and stuff. So basically we got to uh, clean up the, the rust and make sure that that doesn't stick down, going down the slope also. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the equipment here? I just invite people to come down and, and check out the store. We have a lot to offer, a lot of free fitting options, um, making sure that people get warm equipment for the season and, and get their equipment tuned up and ready to go. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Stay with us reporting live in Marquette, Ansley Watson, and we'll be back with more of your TV6 morning news after the break.